uh, why don't we briefly uh, uh, introduce our study, uh, which is about just abstract uh, regarding your study. So uh, I think it's a good idea to provide a, a summary of our session, and then let's move toward uh, the discussion part. So, uh, so um, Professor, uh, starting from uh, Professor Shim from uh, KEI, uh, why, Dr. Shim, sorry, uh, uh, why don't we first start uh, the, your uh, the research first, and then the uh, the second we wanted to uh, hear uh, about the, the Mr. Munson Ko's uh, uh, the research summary, and then uh, why don't we have uh, the a, a Professor Ans um, uh, the research uh, uh, summary, then Professor Suji Tatacharya uh, can uh, summarize um, his research, and then I will also summarize mine. And then let's uh, continue our discussion with regard to the, the questions that we already uh, uh, have in mind uh, based on our presentation. And then we will keep continuing our uh, the, the discussion more. So uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Uh, Shim, uh, why don't you uh, first summarize your or brief introduce your research uh, presented in this uh, conference? Uh, Professor Park? Yes. Uh, is that for kind of a summary or kind of no, just an abstract? I think or? abstract would be okay. So if you have uh, the abstract, your abstract. So why don't you just briefly uh, introduce your abstract? Then that will do summarize okay. your research work. Yes. Yeah, I'm just uh, like um, talk about uh, during the pandemic era, the how why the air quality is important. Uh, in terms of the mortality rate due to the uh, pandemic and and air quality, and also uh, link to that problem, uh, the the national issue in Korea to reduce the PM two point five, and I'm going to uh, briefly uh, address the importance of how the agricultural innovation is necessary in our country uh, to reduce uh, particular uh, matters, uh, reductions for better air quality. Thank you, Thank Dr. You. Shim. Yeah, that's a great. Um, so uh, I'm really, uh, the, the, after watching your uh, the presentation, that was a really great, um, and then uh, I hope we can, even the uh, Professor Ann is really interested in environment and the uh, human body impact. So that would be a, another the key part. He may uh, address some questions or give some comments regarding the, the current topic. So uh, let's, let's, to dis let's discuss that part later, however. Um, uh, Mr. Ko, uh, why don't you um, provide your abstract uh, with re regard to your research? Okay, the, the topic of my research is to introducing the, the urban utility concept, which combines the urban growth and urban disasters. I think um, this is um, important because the urbanization is, is rapid in the third world, in Asia, in Africa, and the urban disasters are becoming less predictable, and there's an increased attention to the quality of life. Um, so through this research, this is not a quantitative data analysis, but uh, a literature review to provide a concept, introducing that concept about urban utility and its impact to the urban growth. Um, as I explained, this is interesting because um, uh, this provides a Mm, uh, some of the interesting findings to the developing countries, as well as uh, as a pandemic situation. If there's another type of disasters, like uh, Hurricane Ida in the U.S. Of, in August, this combined disaster also uh, affects the urban utility changes. So, understanding what uh, determines the components of urban disaster would be very interesting and would provide uh, some of the interesting findings to the uh, 
the policymakers, administrators, engineers to consider to uh, develop a uh, more competitive city as well as sustainable development of the cities. So I will stop here. Over to you, Professor Park. Thank you, Mr. Ko. Um, actually, that work uh, he um, uh, conducted um, under my uh, the, the supervision. So I, I know well about his study, and I know how it is important, uh, actually, to say. So thanks for uh, the, uh, bringing uh, the, your topic to this pandemic session, too, because that will be also very important in measuring uh, the, uh, the urban utility um, uh, decrease and then the, co the recovering recovery uh, process. So I, I really, really interested in, uh, uh, in, in watching. I was really even interested in watching yours. Um, thanks so much. Uh, Professor An, um, can you uh, uh, also uh, summarize or, or make uh, the, the, uh, provide your abstract um, with us? Actually, uh, we are also um, had um, Olympic uh, in Japan. Also, we are expecting to have a Beijing Olympic soon. So your uh, the the study is also very uh, interesting, and also it is also re related with the pandemic season. So uh, it would be great uh, to have yours. So why don't you uh, summarize yours? Yes. Uh, actually, a mega sports event and a globalization phenomenon is not only the symbol of the process of modernization but also the vehicle to upgrade global power and hold the dominant position in the world competition in the post-industrial era. Uh, this study notified the role of Megasports event as a strategy for urban innovation in the context of global and local. Comparing the different roles of Megasports event between developing country and developed country, we intend to answer two questions. One is what explains the niche and role of Megasports event? The second is what are the major evidence of the transition in the globalization? Uh, the conceptual framework based on the temporal and spatial perspective provides the mechanism through which the strategy for urban innovation has been changed from motivation for modernization to rethinking of localization. Uh, focusing on the case of city Seoul, we also compare the major issues between two phases, role of agent, urban form, and urban development. Finally, this study shed light on the concept of localization, which means the convergence of globalization and localization and suggest the role of local agent for hosting Megasports event. Thank you. Thank you, Professor An. Uh, it was also a very interesting uh, topic. So uh, the, uh, the audiences, you can uh, also watch uh, those videos already uploaded to our webpage, YouTube, so you can um, briefly uh, well, well understand about uh, those studies. Even uh, most studies are currently published in our uh, the Asian Journal of Innovation and Policy. So also, you can read uh, the, the articles too. Um, the fourth one, uh, Professor Suji Bhattacharya uh, can address his research uh, briefly, uh, focusing on the abstract or summarization. So please do that, Professor. Thank you. I hope you are able to hear me. Uh, the uh, the study was done with a uh, to investigate i would say that how india responded to this covid 19 situation and particularly how is in the context of sti interventions and in a sense it was a it was I would say that India, Indian pharmaceutical farms over the years had created a different sort of uh, access globally and addressed the huge developing market and also developed markets through their generic drugs, new abbreviated drug applications, many manufacturing plants, etc. But on the other hand, this there was as the world was india was also unprepared for this type of a pandemic and on one hand you have to un, we have to look at there were 
the huge population of around 1300 million or so in the in india on the and on the other hand the the large uh, type of connect the uh, the indian pharmaceutical farms had globally to address the challenges of the global uh, the particularly of africa and the other developing countries so we looked at within that innovation context that how that Indian farms responded, how the government responded, and to what are the learning lessons from the study. And what we found also, also we went deep in, to look at a particularly a, a very strong cluster, which is called a genome valley cluster, a pharmaceutical cluster in India, and it is very well globally connected, to look at how this particular cluster also responded. And during this the study actually throws, throws light on the different importance of developing the strategic linkages across the global value chain and across the, across the different stakeholders. And it also, in a sense, gives some very promising uh, outcomes of seeing that the, the sort of when we talk of concepts like open innovation when farms uh, uh, collaborate together or triple helix when university industry linkages takes things forward we found that these types of institutional structures are not very really strong in india per se but during covid 19 we found that this happened and many of the of these type of linkages became visible and with that we could see that many positive outcomes came and India addressed many of these challenges not only for the country at large for also globally but also the study draws attention to the the importance of looking of of what you call going developing these type of institutional structures and also looking at regulatory aspects looking at how what are the failures that can happen in a system and how to respond when these type of failures happen so with that the study draws attention to the what is i would say that the the study has implications globally also in and also within the context of developing and developed countries that was Thank you. Yeah, uh, it was a really interesting. Uh, also, uh, after watching your video, uh, and then uh, I, I believe that the uh, many audiences can also watch the, your video, and they may understand how it is important uh, re uh, about the responding the pandemic problem in India. So uh, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, myself, um, I also uh, well, actually, this session is as I told you that pandemic and innovation. Uh, uh, based on the country diversity. So we are actually have two Korean cases, one India case and one the United States case. And another, myself, uh, study is about North Korea's case. So you may be interested in North Korea stuff. I will br uh, briefly uh, summarize my uh, the research, which is um, about conducting pilot study uh, toward the inaccessible area areas on the Korean Peninsula, especially Dancheon City. So we actually uh, they developed a simulation process for uh, understanding how um, the economic progress or economic growth in Dancheon City area could uh, uh, develop more uh, the, the areas, especially the new buildings based on the job employment increase, therefore the population increase. So uh, we actually simulated based on that the uh, two economic scenarios, plus um, uh, that the location of new buildings for the residential area and for non-residential area uh, 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 would be uh, different if we apply the impel development uh, strategy or if we uh, they, they provide the sprawl uh, development process for the North Korea uh, uh, the area. So uh, based on that, uh, I try to uh, 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 include those COVID-19 scenarios, especially associated with economic recess. So, but the, at this moment, uh, we couldn't address that part because OECD data is only focused on the before COVID-19. So 
this study was actually analyzed the last year, so we couldn't add that. But as an implication, this, uh, this study will be very important even for the North Korea's area, especially Jansan City. And I hope uh, this study can continue uh, to provide more diverse scenarios uh, based on the current uh, the, uh, the study. So if you see my uh, video, it provides that the, um, the, the many uh, the 3D uh, based uh, the map uh, process and how where which area could be developed for the residential area and which area could be developed for non-residential area. And this study conducted uh, together with um, the, our uh, the, uh, collaborator, uh, Dr. Min Su Son, uh, Kim Tae Ko and uh, Kim Chul Kim uh, from uh, Korea Institute of Construction and Technology, and even um, uh, Mr. Dong In Jo uh, from uh, Mirepo, Korea, and also uh, two professors uh, who are uh, very uh, expertise uh, in, in, in land use modeling and economic modeling. So, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Changun Park and Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Changun Park and Dr. Uh, Do Hyun Kim, I, I really appreciate for that. Okay, um, then um, I would like to move uh, toward our discussion uh, about this session. Actually, this is a special session uh, for the pandemic, but we have um, another uh, the, the pandemic session starting from 4.30 uh, uh, via Zoom. So if you visit our webpage, uh, conference webpage, then the, you can find um, the, uh, the Zoom uh, link, uh, and then I really hope you can also join there, which uh, also covers many interesting issues in pandemic, uh, economically, or uh, the, uh, the, the, Taiwan, uh, the uh, Thailand um, the case, and many other uh, the interesting points, especially the, uh, the, the automation, uh, cars, and others. So that is the, another session we may do. Okay, uh, why don't we first um, uh, start regarding the uh, questions um, and um, uh, Professor um, uh, Bhattacharya, uh, can you um, uh, address kind of a general questions regarding the, our approaches needed for uh, the responding the pandemic issue, especially the those studies uh, we actually see um, not uh, they have a fully covered. You want me to uh, put up the question which I had put up, or do you want, uh, or shall we start and ask the others to put pose the question and try to see that how? What do you think? Do you propose that I put up my question and then try to answer it, or shall I put up my question? Yeah, uh, uh, but before going your the specific question. Uh, is that okay? Uh, first, uh, start uh, uh, about the uh, the general question. Is that okay? So I would like to first. Um, I have your question. Uh, general question is that I had I had raised the, I had raised these two questions which yes. I felt are important. That how, huh? The what can be the mechanisms that can strengthen these type of university industry government linkages? That was one question which I had put up. And I feel that there is a large number of debate on this, on university, industry, government linkages. But uh, the fundamental aspect is that your universities have to be uh, really research-oriented university. Your universities have to be entrepreneurial university along with high quality of research. It is not only the linkages that will happen. The linkage can only happen if you have one part of these universities moving ahead in the value chain and doing these type of two other functions and along with high academic research. And then it should also have various types of incubation, startups. So it should be visible, these type of entrepreneurship by the university. And the industries have to be R&D oriented industry, knowledge intensive industries, which then only they will have the in what you call the desire to link with the universities and both ways and government has to be it is not that as the earlier speaker the keynote speaker had also pointed out the government role is governance but it is more than governance in a sense i will say that government on one hand it is the role of 
defining the governance framework and other but on the other hand government has to be a partner also a much more closed partner with the university research organization the industry so that is where this helix type of structures comes now the new understanding is on quad helix where the society and the civil society is also involved because if you are bringing innovation to the market if you are bringing new drugs to the market if you are bringing new vaccine to the market new products to the market it is very important that you also engage the society from very early stages so that these type of uh, connects happens and the the proper what when we are looking at the sustainability and all these issues can be handled at the early stages so that is one point where i feel that importance of this type of linkages triple helix has to be understood because triple helix and all are being said but there are many times i have seen that people are not uh, particularly here that looking at what this why this helix works and does not work the second which was was talking professor patacharya uh, professor ha huh. professor uh, can you just start from the first yes. question can we just start from the your first yeah. question yeah yeah i think that would be great could we can so just... summing up the first question yeah the summing yeah, yeah. of the first question is that yeah that the the structures like triple helix quad helix are very important but we have to see how the structures really happens and works it is not about we can't say the university and the research institutions are not linking with industry because the industries are not if the industry does not invest in r and d or the universities are not doing the entrepreneurship research entrepreneurship and these type of technology then these type of linkages does not happen and the government has to be partner of that so that is within this whole process so that is the summary of right right process. so we let's first i would be happy the, to hear from the others also yeah so let's first talk mm, yeah, about yeah. The, your your from you and the others regarding also. the mechanism that can strengthen the research is like a, the university research institute and um, the uh, the um, The, the company or industry so how those three uh, the connections may be uh, the the well linked after covid-19 or the new normal life so i think that would be really mm. interesting because professor an is currently located in the in korea in in the korean um, the situation regarding university and he may maybe better understand about the university strategy and also dr shim as currently uh, uh, involved in the korea uh, the environment institute so he may better understand about the uh, the research institute the strategy regarding the connections so and even the the mr uh, munson ko is also uh, working at the uh, the the as a as a pitch student but working at the world bank so he may be better understand about the the uh, global uh, the cooperation strategies especially targeting on the uh, the uh, the developing countries in in africa and others so i think that would be, they may have very uh, the a, a wonderful idea regarding those the uh, the strategy you are currently thinking uh, or such uh, the, the raised as a question uh, with regard to the, uh, the after covid-19 uh, the the strategy uh, about the, the 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 linking those three uh, components so uh who got to first talk uh, professor um the dr shim uh can you first uh, raise uh your your uh the thought um regarding this linkage uh, uh based on the your the, the experience in korea korea environment institute the uh the question is um here that the uh in terms of the mecha mechanism after covid-19 um how can we strengthen those the uh, three uh, connections in education is like a university and also research institute and um, the uh, industry level so um, in, in terms of uh, the your situation in korea environment institute how uh, what kind of experience you are currently uh, 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 having with regard to the covid-19 response um, in terms of this the collaboration or linkage among three uh, components 
Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. I think there are a lot of aspects in terms of speaking about those connections, and there are a lot of uh, subject uh, to talk about that question. So, um, I personally uh, have some, uh, uh, some importance of the indoor air quality because in the pandemic era, and also uh, we are starting uh, to like uh, work remotely uh, from house and and and. So is a letter uh, we have more time to spend uh, the our office or like a home. So I think uh, that's why uh, like our environment is more uh, in, uh, like um, uh, depending on the air quality, uh, indoor air quality. So I think uh, research and also uh, some uh, like. Um, like um, company have probably some opportunity to uh, make a better uh, indoor air quality. Like uh, one good example is uh, some some of Korean uh, like a company are now uh, making some uh, like a air filter to like a filter not only for like a PM 2.5. Also, they also uh, try to filter out the virus. So, which is um, probably um, a very uh, good direction to uh, innovate uh, in the area of uh, air filter. And also that uh, could make another good opportunity to make a, a new field. Uh, the, uh, a little bit the, uh, the additional uh, the, 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 the questions I wanted to add is that, um, so, um, how that COVID-19 um, experience uh, could um, affect that kind of uh, the, the indoor, um, the, uh, the air quality, uh, the collaboration. Do you have any kind of uh, example or experience about that? Oh, uh, before and why, after COVID-19? Yeah, indoor air quality doesn't change much because uh, uh, actually the air quality is getting better because uh, we are, have a social distancing and uh, sometimes uh, we, we do not travel much before, as much as before. Uh, so I'm not talking about the quality of indoor air, qual uh, indoor, uh, air quality issue. I'm talking about uh, the, like, um, the people have more interest in uh, the focusing on better uh, air quality because we are spending more time inside, not outside. And, and uh, even, you know, the situation where, uh, when the like a uh, virus is more uh, like a sp spreading. So uh, in the case, uh, I want to say like uh, indoor air, the air quality preventing the, the not only for the, the air pollutant, also kind of some like a uh, virus and other uh, particles, uh, which is, uh, uh, we didn't uh, have much attention before. I see. Thank you. Uh, Professor Ang, uh, what about the, your, the aspect of uh, university uh, level uh, regarding the uh, a strengthening um, the strategies uh, combining those three components? Okay. Uh, actually, uh, I totally agree with the opinion the, by Dr. Shim. So, and the, we need to the, uh, study more the, the, that as perspective. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, what about the, the global the aspect, um, the Mr. Moon Sung Ko? No, I, I want to hear the, the another opinion. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, from my perspective, uh, from the workplaces, 
um, the, if I understood correctly about the question that is the, how to well link with industries uh, from the universities or education uh, centers would be the, um, well, from where I sit here, I'm, I'm, a, um, I'm a seconded person to uh, this institution, but there is also a significant gap realized between the universities and job markets. So many have said that that is practicality is lacking from the universities. Uh, it is well recognized for a long, long time, I believe. And uh, the uh, from my limited experience here that I realized that there are more programs to allow these university students to uh, the job market in a smooth transition. There are some of the assistance from the government uh, or the other, uh, mm, the other institutions assistance. For example, um, that would be uh, a little bit extreme thing, but the, uh, here in the bank, there is a program, um, it is kind of agreement with the, with the government that the sum of the initial years of the uh, payment is provided by the government or is paying half and half. That uh, such program actually reduces the burden from the bank to hiring uh, straight from uh, the students straight from the universities to get settled and to get more practical um, lessons. And um, yeah, these are the trends in the bank, I believe, and as well as the other uh, international organizations to make more smoother, smoother transition from the university to the job markets. Thank you. Yes, over um, to you. I, uh, the, the, those, the, uh, the connections um, also really the specific, um, but the, uh, anyway, uh, that would be uh, helpful um, uh, to understand uh, about the stress establishment. However, in terms of the, a little bit macro level uh, regarding the government policy or about the three uh, the components, linkages, or like a, uh, the innovation uh, the strategy may be really uh, needed um, to uh, uh, talk about. But the, uh, I think uh, the, the question is very specific and the, the background of our scholars currently uh, the here may, may, be, may not be associated with that the, uh, the, the field. So that may be a little bit uh, also uh, the difficult to um, uh, the, the suggest the specific uh, the strengthening uh, idea regarding uh, those the, uh, the combination. Uh, we actually that. looked at it, Professor, in a sense that why system failures uh, can be addressed. This failures within the system, and when our study we looked at it, the farms and the and the government uh, 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 interactions when it happened, then these type of outcomes could uh, take place. And when these interactions broke at a different stages, so it was in a sense empirical finding that when these types of linkages happens, then this, the system failures does not. So you can't actually, we contextualize that you can't look only in terms of the market failure type of an understanding. You have to look into a much larger understanding of regional innovation system, how it works. You have to look at a sectoral innovation system and then you have to look at this. So that was the issue which came across. So at different instances, we picked up and also the the failures that it of right, the system. Right. I agree so, on that. And even we have to consider so that, that the supply side and demand side together, then um, that would be another the issue mm -hmm. we have to uh, pursue because it, this is so, as of now, we are currently uh, getting a hope to the, the recovery stage from COVID-19. So perhaps our a lot of two-year effort to uh, uh, overcome this pandemic problem may be a really good example to give us um, how to uh, uh, the strengthening, how to strengthen uh, the, the, our uh, the separated work to be work together. Uh, so we may find yeah. more uh, the samples and examples together. So I think that would be the next stage we have to talk more. 
the, regarding the second question, um, is that also uh, related to this uh, from uh, Professor um, yeah. Suji Patachayara? The second uh, question. Can you, can you address uh, that? I just, yes. uh, I mean, the second question looked more uh, into a, a science, uh, in a what you call a prominent life science cluster. And uh, we, the which is called Genome Valley, and it is a, uh, it is a cluster which has around 300 or so uh, uh, farms and research institute, laboratory facilities. And over, over the years, the, 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 the farms have developed capabilities and they have become uh, what you call, some of them are important suppliers globally in the pharmaceutical generic farms. Some of them are bringing generic drugs and many of the MNCs are there. And this whole, we looked at it within the context of, a, of the city of Andhra Pradesh, Hyderabad, the capital city and also of the policies there. What we found was that what are the mechanisms that are most important for this science cluster to develop. And we've said that what we felt that it is not that you just put money and develop a science cluster, something like that. It evolves, evolves over the years with different type of trust which builds up. And the trust system builds up not only within the Italian international trust system, which builds up a long uh, partnerships, which happens. And you then, when you have these aspects of it, so trust institutions and the intermediary organizations becomes very important, how you develop them and how the government policies also changes with the contemporary times. It cannot be a static policy. So, and how the policy, so, we found that the government was, uh, in a sense, proactive, this government, so other states could not perform well. They already had in the airport a specialized zone where vaccine could be exported with proper cold chain and all that, the cold supply chain. On the other hand, there was this high-tech city where the computation and informatics, it is basically farms which are primarily informatics, bioinformatics farm. So it is diff different than the Bangalore cluster, which is famous for ICT, information communication. This cluster is more dominated by it and they are connected to them. So the question was that how the mechanisms happens that can develop the science cluster. So we found that this type of, but we also looked at it in a different sense, which we have not positioned here that when we looked at Stanford University and the other, when they are created this type of Silicon Valley, they also had these farms, which are what you call law farms, which could understand the valuation of the technologies and also the farms like regulatory agencies, which were much more involved. Here we found that is the missing thing in this type of a cluster. So, so these are also one of the issues that has come up that how actually you develop it. And there is great learning from South Korea also. In our earlier study, we did the learning from South Korea as well as China that how they have developed these clusters in a sense. And I would say that uh, Really, for for us, the South Korean clusters are a learning lesson for us. So here yeah, I will end. Actually, yeah, the is a really important question that the what kind of mechanisms are really important uh, for life science cluster to develop. So we actually also um, Korea are doing that work uh, to, especially related with the vaccine, um, the production, and and also the um, the other uh, uh, the product, um, uh, we are currently uh, uh, doing a lot of work. Even though uh, the the actual scholars uh, uh, the here join are not working about life science work, but um, if you have any kind of uh, experience or thought uh, to hear or, or, or opinion, and that would be I think great uh, to talk about the life science cluster uh, uh, issues um, in in Korea case. Or, or the, the, in terms of the mechanism or a structure uh, needed for developing that cluster. So if you have any uh, experience, that would be great to share. Do you have any, any kind of experience about that? 
Professor An or Dr. Shim or Mr. Ko. Do you did you hear or like uh, to hear any... from the others also how our eminent uh, yeah. yeah but I mean I mean the yes, any audience uh, yeah. also after uh, watching this discussion they may uh, <laughs> uh, reply to our yes. video mm -hmm. that we may think that so I think this is a really mm -hmm. open question uh, to any anyone mm -hmm. who, uh, who watching who is what who are uh, who is watching this video so I hope uh, this can be also open questions for them because uh, we are not the uh, expertise in, in that kind of uh, life science clustering. However, in terms of general uh, things, I think uh, this is a really, really important uh, the case, especially associated with uh, COVID-19. Because uh, anyway, we need we need to prepare uh, uh, another uh, pandemic. Uh, in the future, even though we don't know when. It yes, the challenge for COVID-19, I would say that within one and a half year, yeah, the challenge was much more challenge, that within one and a half year, the, you had to develop the vaccine within a mm -hmm. year or so. Mm -hmm. New timelines had happened, mm -hmm. and new types of, uh, what you call the challenges happened, as you all know. So we found that a textile cluster, which was actually, in a sense, was... Uh, had a great economic distress and then government intervened to uh, strengthen that 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 regulatory guidelines for manufacturing PPE kits and masks and so what is the international regulation so put it that so that was also important of how these farms had this new economic opportunity and they could actually sustain this and then they outperformed in a sense india became the second largest uh, manufacturer of ppe kit and all that so here the role of government became very important that how they anticipated a problem which is there and how they could synergize on the other hand this is of genome valley is more of a specialized cluster the, the both are specialized that is a textile cluster and this is a specialized life science cluster. But so each has its own uh, dynamics, I would say, of a cluster. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, uh, Professor. Um, now I, yeah, uh, now I think it's a good idea to um, uh, go over um, the our uh, the, the specific uh, the studies. Um, uh, Ichi scholars already uh, gave their uh, great presentations uh, in video. So I would like to ask you um, how your study could be meaningful to Asian countries and uh, other developing countries uh, even after COVID-19. So why don't you deliver or address uh, the, the, the implications in Asian countries and developing countries based on the, your research I would be really appreciated for uh, uh, sharing uh, that kind of idea together. So uh, why don't you start from the Mr. Uh, Ko uh, with regard to the, your case implications to Asian countries and other developing countries based on the European. Well, to confidently answer to your question, I absolutely need a further study should be done, the quantitative uh, data analysis but uh, from uh, the potential impact to the uh, developing countries about my uh, research would be, um, would be a policy recommendations would be addressed, especially these Asian countries and um, other uh, third world countries. In my research also identified, but uh, there are high, urbanization uh, process is happening in these third world. About last 20 years, there's about 10% point increase in urbanization. So um, since my study is related to the urban growth, this is highly relevant, I believe. Uh, the nutshell is that my study um, highlights the, uh, the importance of the urban utility components, which are the earning levels, housing costs, and commuting costs to be more competitive with cities. Um, so when the disasters 
like a pandemic hit the one of the cities in Asian countries or in any other world, uh, there will be the significant dynamically dynamic change on the on, on the job market, housing market, as well as the transportation models. So if uh, these are not um, uh, uh, not sufficiently handled, there will be uh, some some inf uh, the impacts to the city in terms of urban growth. Some cities uh, experience more significant damages. This city will lose population. In they uh, they lose the growing uh, uh, growth urban further urban growth. So. Um, so uh, these um, the policymakers and the others will be informed about uh, how to boost the job market, job creations, and stabilize housing costs and, and the commuting costs as well. But to do so, they they need the data. Um, I assume that many of the countries do not have data, even though they they have data. The quality is not really trustworthy. In that case, they also learn from the other country experiences. United States or European countries or Korea can be the one of the good examples. The reason why I'm saying that the, uh, uh, the change of these urban utility components will be similar, no matter uh, uh, what kind of uh, economy or the social framework has been uh, fabricated on these countries. Uh, so, for example, in in the states, because of the uh, the flooding, there was a um, increase of increase of a uh, rent cost, the housing, and uh, job market changes. These will be uh, will informing the uh, other uh, third world countries, which include Asia, how to react or uh, to make a countermeasure to uh, to be more sustainable cities. So um, these are my answer to uh, your question without going into the further quantitative data analysis. So over to you, Professor Park. Okay, thank you. Um, actually, um, the, the, your research also uh, connected to the, uh, the another que question I uh, raised, which is that the, how the different environmental settings in, in for example, uh, the, uh, the Asian countries especially developing countries, uh, would, be, would have a different um, experience from uh, this COVID-19. So um, to, to that reason, mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. it would be also a good idea the, how you, well, even though you mentioned that the, uh, the Asian countries are currently ex experiencing the 10% higher in terms of their uh, the, the urban growth or, or urbanization. So in the case, the, um, how you're the, the U.S. Uh, the flooding uh, based um, or, or the uh, urban utility concept can be applied for uh, this, uh, the different settings in, the, in, in Asian countries or, or the, uh, the developing countries. So I, it would be great if you can also. Um, I see this as an important study. Uh, yeah. If I would like to speak, I see this as an important study, and I see that when we are talking in our country also about smart cities, mm -hmm. but then when we are talking of smart city, it is in a much more in a narrower sense of looking at IoT based interventions and all that. But how you create this whole system where you can respond to these type of emergent situations are and what, as you have rightly said, about the digital, uh, the data, which becomes very important, that how you look at different types of data, not only a typical data which they are looking at are much more myopic, but data which is across the development aspects of it, SDG goals and all that. So, Professor Patachari, smart city uh, has to be redefined. I would say yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, can we just uh, yeah, have a five-minute pause? Because uh, we are we are currently uh, really uh, having the hours. Uh, so I think this is really interesting because uh, um, uh, we just talked about that the, 
how the different environmental settings uh, would have a different uh, uh, effect uh, from our research. For example, uh, the, the Mr. Moon Sung Ko's uh, the research is targeted on the United States, especially the urban flooding, and the, the, he tried to measure urban uh, utility uh, based on the urban uh, flooding damage. But the, not just uh, because we are talking about country diversity, and if it is applied to, for example, India, then whether or not that urban utility concept can be automatically apl applicable with those components you use settings like housing index and um, other index would be the, the, the commonly applied to the India case. So uh, that would be another thing uh, we have to think. And even after coronavirus, the many, uh, our life uh, changed a lot. So in the case, how uh, this uh, would be a, a, another uh, the implication uh, about your uh, the study to be applied for uh, the other areas. So I just wanted to, uh, not just for the Mr. Moon Sung Ko, but my study even, for example, North Korea's case, we try to uh, simulate Tanshan City's growth and uh, we try to consider their, the urban growth um, the pattern using the Korea's 1980s economy situation targeting on the the Gangwon area, which is similar to, uh, closest to the, the North Korea, then the, uh, that was my, the, our, our assumption uh, with regard to understanding the uh, North Korea's economic growth. But we couldn't uh, adopt or reflect or account for the COVID-19 issues. Further, um, the, we, we are really not knowing um, whether that the North Korea's simulation, uh, the case would be the similar to the uh, other uh, Asian countries like India or the Malaysia or uh, like that. So uh, that would be another topic we may uh, continue to talk. So uh, Professor, uh, Sh Sh uh, Dr. Shim, um, can you just uh, uh, similarly talk about the, your uh, the study, which is which, how, how your study may be uh, meaningful uh, to uh, the, the other Asian countries, especially India or others? And also um, uh, the developing countries, um, even after uh, the COVID-19, and also um, how uh, different settings, environmental settings, may be uh, differently uh, uh, accounted based on the your accounted for based on your uh, the current study. So that would be great to hear about as a general questions I have. Uh, okay. Um, um. My point is that uh, now, for for now, uh, the ammonia emissions from agriculture is uh, very important in the future because uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't know much about the India case, but I, I saw I saw that the northern India has a lot of ammonia emissions as well, and also. The eastern China and also uh, the western uh, South Korea also uh, large emissions of ammonia, and uh, that's from a lot of in in our case in Korea is from uh, like livestock waste and and also the excessive use of fertilizer. And the problem is, uh, I don't know the, the, the mechanism of the, the in, in like a farming society, but uh, probably the, the price and the government to like, a, like a support uh, is probably closely related to why the farmers use uh, excessive uh, fertilizers. And we need to optimize the use of the, the, the fertilizing uh, stuff also the productions of fertilizer as well and also I don't think uh, there are not uh, the available technology to uh, deal with the livestock waste the problem is the community uh, how community uh, try to accept their effort to reduce the ammonia emissions uh, so this is a uh, much more importance uh, in in terms of the governance and uh, the proper 
uh, setting up the policy and the rules in society. But unfortunately in Korea, uh, we didn't notice that the ammonia uh, makes such a, a big problem in Korean air quality uh, until 19, uh, I'm sorry, until 2019. So it's very, uh, uh, the, the academia, this is probably like a classic issues, but in Korea, we didn't notice very well. So um, I think also China and India, probably the, the, the peoples, especially the farmers, uh, recognitions of necessity of the uh, reducing uh, the ammonia from uh, their society and probably the, the proper uh, the evaluation and proper policy and, and, and the impl implication, uh, implementation effort may be more important uh, rather than uh, the technology. That's my point. Thank you, Dr. Shim. Uh, that was a really the, the I think, uh, the meaningful. Uh, uh, Professor um, uh, Suji, um, um, how do you think about the, uh, Dr. Shim's um, the suggestion? It's yes, very important. Uh, actually, what happened in India was uh, uh, we had this uh, a very at one point of time, a very successful, we called it green revolution. And what was happened was that large amount of chemicals were used with a very structured way and hybrid, hybrid crops to uh, produce um, what you call increase the agriculture uh, productivity very strongly. So at one point of time, there was this the great concern that how to feed these millions of people. On the other hand, this green revolution with normal ball logs work and all, just put this type of new types of what you call hybrid, the hybridization plants. And what happened was that also in regions where these crops could not be grown, a particular type of crops, the, the, with these huge chemicals and all, fertilizers, chemicals, and all that, what you call that industrial agriculture started happening in the, in India. And it, it was very successful. Would it, at a, but now when we look back, we find that many of these issues come across and, and it is a very difficult transition for the country at large because of one hand you have to feed the population and the other hand the soil fertility and all these aspects which ammonia and all has increased so much and so the movement is there for uh, looking at much more sustainable green agriculture uh, moving ahead towards organic farming and others but uh, the it is in a sense, I would say a very difficult transition. I would say it is not uh, a very difficult transition. But on the other hand, we have a very well developed agriculture university system with good extension mm -hmm. centers and all that. That is a good hope that agriculture in, in the in system in the country is has a legacy of more than a hundred years or so, developed from British time, and they still have so. On one hand, this is the hope. On the other hand, the problems are very, very severe in the country. Yes, that is the issue of, and very important study, very important study. Thank you. I will uh, also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much uh, for the, um, uh, the, the, your, the, uh, the adding uh, with re, uh, regard to the India's case. So that would be great. Uh, can I move to um, the additional specific questions uh, we may uh, talk, uh, especially um, the, the uh, Mr. Moon Sung Ko actually uh, raised some questions. Um, so uh, to Dr. Shim, uh, he actually um, uh, told that he agreed that, that the governance is one of the most critical factors to resolve challenges, which include the reducing ammonia. So what would be your initial suggestions to improve the governance uh, to be inclusive? It's like a bottom-up and particip uh, participatory. Um, 
and I think that this is also very important in terms of uh, the participatory uh, uh, planning concept or participatory uh, governance. So uh, do you have any kind of uh, uh, bottom-up approach or thought uh, with regard to the, uh, this, um, uh, the reusing ammonia uh, policy in agriculture instead of a government level uh, top-down, the, the regulation and others? Correct? Mr. Munson Cole, is your question? Yes, correct. Yeah. I'm asking the, the Dr. Shim, because Munson Cole uh, raised that question to you. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not uh, in the expertise in those questions, <laughs> because uh, I I just heard that uh, the, the relative uh, the kind of topics from the expert and and our uh, community uh, in in farming society is very uh, very strongly like uh, restrictions to any changes <laughs> because they uh, they uh, uh, always need kind of uh, the government subsidies and uh, they don't want to pay for that so. Uh, and, and and it is very hard to uh, make uh, like a, uh, like ask them for any kind of volunteer innovation and any any uh, kind of effort. So uh, that's why I'm uh, addressing the importance of uh, like uh, also government and also the the industry like. Uh, also, uh, the, the especially uh, the like a chicken industry, like for example, and and they have to acknowledge the importance of the reducing the ammonia, and also the government still uh, doesn't have any specific goal to reduce the ammonia yet. So, uh, so I only can say we need some uh, still time to make those uh, like a plan more clearly. And, and uh, we need some more time to communicate uh, to uh, make those society changes. That's all I can say. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think this is really interesting. Um, uh, uh, Professor um, uh, Patacharya. What about the, uh, the, your, the, the India's um, experience uh, regarding the, the voluntary uh, uh, the participation uh, with regard to the, the, the improving uh, the air quality, or like here in this case, uh, Dr. Shim's study, they're reducing the ammonia or, or, or reducing air pollution, such like this. Do you have any kind of a voluntary uh, uh, practice such like that in your country? Specific policy, what they are trying to do now is trying to talk of, because India has made this commitment of SDG commitment as every country is, and India's commitment is much very at a very high level of commitment on SDG goals. So within that, uh, these uh, are coming, that how we go for a sustainable ag agriculture, how we address these issues of air pollution together. So they are not, each goals are not disconnected from each other. So they are taking it rightly. So connecting the each goals together to see that how they can. Uh, but as I was saying that, that there has to be a fundamental change also, which is a bit difficult uh, because already the, the way the whole the practice uh, of, I would say the, the farming practice, the way the 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 way the whole mechanisms have happened had to be disrupted to what extent that disruptions are possible because uh, for my innovation thing i would say that creative destruction but that creative destruction of shumpi and creative destruction is not so easy so the policies are uh, trying to enable that but then uh, the issue of how much incentive because then you have to 
create a much more larger incentive mechanisms, fiscal and non-fiscal incentive mechanisms. So at what point of time that incentive mechanism would be possible or not? So that is what you call it, different states. We have around 25 states. Then we have these, each states have their own issues. So these type of what is that incentive mechanism to be worked out? They are much more so. It's a continent in itself, India. You see that in some places it is very efficient, very efficient. You will see that it looks like Europe or the US and some places it goes like Africa in a sense. So huge diversity in every ways. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but this is a very important aspect. I think this is, these studies also, I think um, I will try to place uh, this study also in that context and maybe People will be interested to also discuss with Professor Chang Sub Shim for that. Let us see how it happens. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Munson Ko, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ko, uh, what about your experience? Do you have any kind of experience uh, the, the targeting on the, uh, the African countries uh, with regard to the, the environmental improvement effort? So my in perspective is different. Uh -huh. Yes, of the governance, well, by profession, I'm a land administration specialist. I work for how to register land, how to develop cadastral map. So we also discuss about the governance, participatory, voluntary, bottom-up approach, rather than top-down from the government decision. So this is ongoing discussion. There's no resolution yet. So that is why I requested this question to uh, Dr. Shim, if uh, he has uh, any uh, uh, good suggestions. Uh, but from uh, my profession experiences, there were no uh, um, absolute uh, good uh, solution how to attack this governance issue. But it's very important to bring these uh, uh, stakeholders, the citizens coming to the table to discuss how, how to uh, improve the current processes related to uh, the governance, how to register land. So um, yeah, that is from my uh, two cents. Okay. And the reason why I requested this question is also, there is a um, Korea funded project is happening in Philippines in uh, agriculture projects. So I assume that the uh, the situation will be dissimilar in the Philippines, the governance in terms of making more environment friendly approaches. So that is why I requested it. it I, don't, I think um, it is interesting to know if there is any uh, initial uh, suggestion from Korean side. Yeah, over to you, thank you. Yeah, but I mean, the, uh, as a uh, professor, uh, the um... Suji uh, Patacharya mentioned that incentive approach would be a, another good way uh, in t uh, by promoting uh, the participants uh, to uh, voluntarily to the, a, a sort of a policy like a reducing stuff. And this is widely applied in economics even. So I think that is a really good way uh, to we may consider uh, with regard to the environmental improvement policy, not just the regulations, but uh, from the bottom-up approach, I think. That, and, and I think I really appreciate it, Professor. Um, this is uh, really a, a, another the, um, the, 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 the way we have to consider in the, eventually in the future. Thank you. Um, uh, I would like to, um, well, the, actually, the, the Mr. Ko uh, raised the question that, hey, your uh, study uh, piloted uh, the multiple digital twin project, um, uh, 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 reminding him uh, regarding the multiple digital twin project. So um, how do I think the most challenging part of, of uh, spatial analysis from my research perspective? And also, um, how do I think current technologies uh, that can be uh, practically and sustainably uh, uh, applicable to developing countries where um, the resources are limited and the capacities are low. So I think this is a really, really important question because digital twin requires a, a, a sort of uh, advanced level of tech, the, uh, the, the technological uh, the innovation level and the internet service 
and many other the, uh, uh, improvement in technologies. So uh, this is really especially uh, important. And especially in, in our case, we try to not just uh, uh, in terms of the perfect uh, the digital twin model or Landius model, uh, the, but the, uh, we try to develop uh, allocating a model to allocate uh, the, our the economic uh, strategies uh, toward the land use development. So um, we are trying to make automation of this um, uh, the land use model to be more um, the useful for digital twin uh, uh, the practice. But the, uh, we are do, trying to do the digital twin type of uh, work, not just focusing on the technological improvement, but based on the data. So we are more uh, uh, that depend on the secondary data and then by combining that and by using the, uh, the general equilibrium uh, approach, we trying to allocate those things as an initial point to the land. So the, uh, the Korean, uh, North Korea's uh, development process is actually associated with this type of uh, uh, the, the communication with uh, data and uh, the land. So that is a really interesting point, what I can say. And if it is applied to other um, countries, developing, especially developing countries where resources are limited, it would be really, really difficult. However, if that kind of uh, the technology-based digital twin approach would be much, much difficult in those countries. But our secondary data approach and economy-based approach may be much easier because anyway, they can have that kind of data set, initial data set, then we can develop sort of, uh, we can apply those, the, uh, uh, the general equilibrium approach to create the system. And then once we uh, simulate that, and then we then uh, allocate our results to the land. So I believe that our approach may be much attractive, much more attractive to uh, developing countries if we uh, combine with their trade data, economy data, and then their current land use information. So I hope uh, this would be really uh, the, uh, um, effective uh, to develop a further uh, digital twin model for developing countries, and even in Korea too. All right, um, I would like to um, also uh, ask to Mr. Uh, Ko, um, uh, which is that the, um, even though you are not uh, providing that empirical results uh, with regard to the, your, uh, the utility concept, urban utility concept, but the, uh, do you have any kind of, uh, well, not just, uh, I don't expect the, uh, the, any kind of answers, but do you, did you think any kind of alternative um, indices that can be applied for different settings, urban, uh, different settings in other developing countries, so like India or Malaysia or, or, or other African countries you may visit? So if you have kind of different idea, then I would like to hear about that too. Okay, thank you very much for the question. Um, the alternative indices um, would apply to the country where data is unavailable or environment setting is different. Mm. But I believe India is such a large and a very highly advanced technology a country. I believe there, there should be data. And they, uh, I think um, the, the same methodology can work in India as well. But some of the underdeveloped countries in Africa, they do not have data. Or uh, some of the communist countries also existing in the world. If that case, well, I would suggest to use the alternative indices instead of the individual earnings, earning data or individual housing uh, housing cost data, we can also apply some of the tax information. Mm. Well, um, it should be different by the countries, but many countries in Africa also collect the uh, um, income taxes as well as housing taxes. So we all probably gonna need assumption how do 
or make it a trust a trusted uh, data but that is a separate story but we can uh, alternatively use these uh, two components like a tax uh, income tax and housing tax we can estimate the how um i think i think we can estimate the urban utility well there is a, one more the component to uh necessary to the urban utility which is commuting costs but you, we can also use a survey brief survey to ask people how how many minutes how how many hours you're going to spend the day daily to go to work and come back home so uh, we can uh, uh, alternatively use a different data to uh, estimate the urban utility concept which i believe i think um, it is i think it is a feasible yes over to you okay, professor you. Park. all right um i think uh the, the your the flexibility in uh, applying those urban utility concepts which is i think about you but the uh, this is uh, that flexibility will be really really important for the especially developing countries because they do not have uh, they're the same data sets uh, available in, in the United States or, or Korea, such like that. So based on that, the flexible uh, the, the ap application, uh, uh, like tax information and others, then maybe also um, uh, the really useful to understand um, the urban utility uh, measure and, and, and up to be applied for the disasters like COVID-19 and others. Then we know that how our utility would de change and decrease and how the, the, it, what kind of factors would affect it, that they bounce back toward the normal the utility level, such like that. That would be really the important, the, the, the policy implications plus um, the research uh, uh, the topic. So uh, that would be really uh, appreciated. And thanks so much. Uh, thanks um, a lot for your the reply uh, with regard to the, uh, the question I had. Okay, so. Um, now um, I would like to, uh, with our our professor, um, the Suji uh, uh, Suji Patacharya, um, I would like to uh, uh, now uh, open uh, the questions that we have to each other so far, because uh, uh, Professor An has uh, a completed schedule uh, with his uh, the current position, so uh, he's just left, but. I would like to uh, have a, a little bit open question uh, for uh, for five minutes about. Then uh, I would like to conclude our session uh, uh, with regard to the, the first pandemic uh, uh, special session. Because uh, we actually spent about two hours, so I think this is great. And then we have the rec uh, the recorded video, so I will. Um, well, the this will be shared. But uh, anyway, as a conclude. Uh, Concluding uh, uh, progress of this uh, the session, please give your questions or comments freely. That would be great. So why don't we first, uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Patacharya, uh, do you have any kind of uh, idea first? I think that would be uh, great for you first. No, I will. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, uh, I will continue with the last uh, uh, this uh, the issue of geospatial data and all. What I feel is also that uh, the uh, which you are suggesting surveys and uh, the uh, well-designed samples, structure sample can actually complement this geospatial and validate it both ways. In a sense, it, it complements each other and also validates the results in a sense that they, so there I see that uh, the 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 uh, the geospatial type of data uh, capturing and all which you have done so so it can be a much more a larger research uh, problem as and you are saying that the evidence based uh, policy is uh, what actually is required so it brings that evidence based policy but it also brings within that that the other aspects also maybe which can be derived much more from when other issues can also come when you do that segregated sam base sampling across so that some of the issues which can be missed there it can be complemented here so i see that uh, making the study much more uh, more useful to the policy advocacy i would say so 
that is the point where uh, I thank I you. Um, um, any other further the comments from uh, or, or questions uh, from Dr. Shim and Mr. Ko? Do you have? A No. <laughs> what about Dr. Uh, Mr. Cole? Um, I don't have a further question or comments. I just strongly agree with what uh, uh, Professor Patacharya just said. Evidence-based based the uh, the research is very important to uh, to the policy uh, policy uh, recommendations and and uh, the importance of geospatial data is one of the very uh, trendy uh, way of research that um, I really like uh, what he said. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, um, so um, I would like to con uh, address a sort of a concluding remark, but before that, uh, Professor uh, Patacharya, do you have any additional uh, note or comment? Say in totality, this has been a very interesting uh, session and with the uh, different presentations which has brought in diversity and also I feel they are very important in their own ways. And I'm sure that, uh, uh, that it opens up uh, uh, some other issues which are very important to this whole, uh, what you call during this COVID pandemic in particular, but in general also when we are talking of the sustainability issues of uh, moving ahead or creating institutional structures and all that. So I see this, um, I would say that um, we all self-praise ourselves also that it has come out well. And uh, there was an anticipation as you know that, uh, um, but the way I would, must appreciate and many thanks to the way the each of the videos have come out our video has also come out so well and uh, and it has worked out very well and i think that uh, there are uh, what you call a small break point happened during youtube but uh, i think that was picked up so these are um, which we take along with us so i thank all of you from my behalf and also uh, uh, within a short time I could virtually know Professor Ji Yong and I could see that I enjoyed working together with him. So we continue this partnership with all. Thank you. So I, I, I really do appreciate about your great effort to make a videos and also deliver to us and then I'll uh, give you a great presentation here with a full paper. I think this is a really great effort. And even uh, Professor um, uh, uh, Patacharya is a really uh, 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 supportive for this. Uh, so I really appreciate it for that. And also, uh, Mr. Uh, Ko, you are currently, I believe, um, in, in 3, 3 a.m., right? So uh, in, in the United States, because he's living in, currently in uh, the Washington, D.C. So. I really appreciate you for your joining uh, about this session, uh, even though it is really late time, uh, early time, actually, to say. So thank you so much for that. And also, Dr. Shim, I know that uh, because we, we are currently having a, a great uh, audit process, um, but uh, even though you are really busy, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining this um, the session. And uh, we actually covered um, the, the country diversity uh, session, even though we are not a common topic but uh, those topics are really, really important. So all videos are already uploaded to the, our the, uh, the, the, the YouTube webpage, and also uh, the papers are available already. So um, if you have any kind of uh, questions or supportive materials, just uh, let us know, then we will try to our best to deliver those uh, the products to you. So I really appreciate it for the all the time, and then I hope we can even, um, I, I believe that we may develop sort of a, a, a research co uh, consortium together. So let's just tr keep trying um, to uh, collaborate, um, develop a, a the collaborating agenda together and I hope um, there can be another fruit that we may uh, have later. 
so I hope uh, you uh, have a full rest uh, after this session. Even though we have another uh, the special session uh, for the pandemic, uh, starting from 4:30 in a different room uh, with a Zoom. And then, if you are okay, it's just join. Or, or otherwise, uh, please have a great rest. Thank you so much for your time, and I really appreciate it for all the support. Thank you.